Hi again, and here's some more peer tutoring tips and tricks. To recap, um, the six main things that I put together that I do in all of my peer tutoring sessions are getting to know the student, minding my body language, positive acknowledgement, explain it, show it, coach it, try it, do it, explain it, and ending the session with a plan. This is part four, explain it, show it, coach it. So I'm finally going to get around to explaining what I mean by this. Explain it, show it, coach it are the three steps for the tutor to do when uh, helping a student with a problem. Now you can apply this to math, you can apply this to chemistry, uh, you can apply this to many things. Um, uh, so I'm just going to say a problem or I might use a math example because that's the easiest. But first you, what you want to do, whatever you're helping the student with, you want to explain the basis for the problem. Ex explain what the problem means or explain the formula that you have to work this with a formula. Um, or ex explain why the formula works if that's uh, relevant, especially in chemistry. You have a lot of like Boyle's law and different things with volume and pressure. Try to try to explain the differences between volume and pressure and how they're uh, inversely proportional to one another. Explain that. Um, and that's why the formula is what it is before solving a, an actual like chemistry problem with it. So explain why it works or explain what the formula is all about first. And then show it means you work an example, but you do the work on the, on the problem. And you work for the example and let the student watch you, kind of like you're a real live YouTube tutorial video, but in person. You work a problem out and then the coach it is after you have worked the problem out for the student to watch, then you have the student work out a problem, but you coach them along the way. You, you know, tell them where you prompt them what to do and you remind them of the formula and here's where you plug in the formula and here's how you plug in the numbers to the formula and you coach them along the way, but have them have the pen in their hand and have them doing it. So explaining how to solve the problem, uh, you want to note any formulas that are going to be needed for a problem and write them down, whether it be, now this can be like in math, if there's a math formula, like completing the square that you just need to memorize and then apply it. Um, or in chemistry, you know, like I said before, Boyle's Law, you memorize the formula for that and then you just apply it, you plug in the numbers. Or if you're studying biology and you're studying mitosis and meiosis, you know, the formula, instead of a formula, you would have the steps in mitosis or the steps in meiosis, the anaphase and telophase. And um, you would have just, you know, make a note of those, those steps and in what order you're supposed to uh, know them in. And then at each step, be sure to explain, go back and keep explaining the why behind behind this. You know, in, in uh, mitosis or meiosis, you know, at one step, the, uh, the fibrils uh, extend to the middle and they attach themselves to each side of the DNA strands. It's, well, it happens then because they're getting ready to pull the DNA strands apart. Um, for those biology people, or if in in math, if you know the next step is to you have to apply this formula. Why? Because this is the slope of the graph. So you have to explain the why at each step of of uh, solving the problem. And don't forget that no detail is too small to explain. It's much better to explain over explain a detail and have the person actually understand it, then have them uh, not understand it and be too shy to ask about it. Because then if they don't understand one thing, then they're going to get move further on in the class and they're going to need to know that thing and it's going to mess them up understanding things later. Now the second part is you, after you've gotten finished explaining the problem, you work in a problem for the student to watch and select a simple problem that just demonstrates clearly the use of the formula or whatever you're doing. 
Um, don't try to complicate things by making a really convoluted problem to do. Just select a very simple problem first. You can increase the difficulty level of the problems after you establish, you know, how to do it with the student, you know, just in a simple direct problem. Um, also, when you're working the problem, narrate, say out loud what you're doing as you're doing it. I mean, even down to the simplest, smallest detail, you know, down and here I'm carrying the one and six plus one is seven, just down to the simplest detail, narrate every single thing that you're doing. Because not only does is that make it clear for the student, but also it gets the student in the habit to think mathematically or think what, oh, along the lines of whatever subject you're studying. It teaches them how to process things because they're hearing you do it as an example. And so it affects them on several levels, uh, more than just uh, being able to solve that one problem. Uh, them being able to hear out loud how you're solving the problem really will affect them, their learning ability. It, it'll increase their learning ability because they'll see how to think about something. And then also stop often when you're going along. Don't just rattle off what you're doing and then get to the end and go, ta-da, um, stop as you go along and make sure and check in and make sure the student's still with you. If the student has a confused look on their face, you know, stop and say, okay, are you with me so far or where did I lose you at? And go back to wherever they got lost and start right before they got lost and go through it again and make sure that they understand before you move on. And then C, coach it, it means have the student try to do a problem now, but you sit on the other side of the table or you sit next to them and you just coach them along verbally as they try to do it. So this is the time to give the student helpful hints while they're working the problem. Later on when they're doing practice problems with you, it's really hard, but you kind of have to sit on your hands and just uh, keep silent and wait for the student to figure things out sometimes. And, but uh, now is the time where you should be prompting them and you should be giving them helpful hints and talking them through it. But just make sure the pen is in their hand. Uh, put the pencil in their hand and the paper over in front of them and stop writing yourself. Make the student write this down now. It's their turn and make the student try to try to figure out uh, what to do step by step. So, but just verbally coach them, but hands off. And oh, and one more thing, it's okay at this point to interrupt the student while they're in the middle of doing the problem. Um, and they make a mistake because you don't want them to get to all the way to the end and have the wrong answer and you could have told them, you know, a while ago. So it's okay to interrupt them and tell them just remember back on positive acknowledgement um, and communication steps to not say no, that's wrong or you did something wrong there. Remember not to say no. Say instead, okay, hold on a minute. Let's go back and look at something. I think we might have missed something. Don't just say no, you're wrong or you did it wrong or that's the wrong answer. Just as a reminder. Okay, so thanks a lot. Uh, the next one will be the uh, student side of it. Um, so check out more of my YouTube tutorials on the channel S. Rusan to St. Louis Community College.